I guess it wouldn't be too out of the course for the developer of Obami Corporation to start their latest game with a musical number. But Library of Runa has been early access for I think a few months to a year now. And I decided to check it out and see what the game is all about. And what we have here is a very intriguing set of mechanics and systems. So the concept is that we are part of this magical library who is in search of the perfect book. I guess they haven't heard of my roguelike book that's coming out soon. There's the uh, perfect plug for today's video. So the goal is to invite people to the library to fight them when they are killed, they are transformed into books, and the goal is only fill the library with the missing books and discover probably some very old and mysterious secrets all about. So the general rule is that you sell invitations to various people based on what kind of sacrifice material you use. This determines the enemy group you're going to fight. After that, you pick your character, and we'll come back to that in a second, and you go to this kind of combat system, where this plays out kind of like a turn-based RPG. Your moves, or combat page, as you see in the bottom, are chosen beforehand, and they represent varying costs, abilities, uh, types of damage, and you get the picture. So your objective is to hit the enemies with what they're weak against in order to stagger them. When an enemy is completely staggered, the game says that you can one-shot kill them, although I found that to be a little finicky. I don't know if that was because I misread the rule, or if there was a bug involved. And again, keep in mind, with this game being in early access, what you see may not represent the current version of it. So, after you've chosen your card and your attacker, the game plays out with everybody making their turn. You get one point of mana or the light back at the start of each round unless a character is staggered and then they will not recover. Combat is over when of course one side is completely defeated. Now the footage you're seeing is basically like one of the first battles, which is why there's only one character, but you will eventually get a party that you'll be able to assign and do roles to. As an interesting concept, how enemies kind of engage themselves determines who you'll hit, because it is possible to block an enemy by rushing them with a stronger character and thereby, you know, taking those blows. Defensive cards work very similar, that when combat plays out, if the dice roll of the defense is higher than that of the attack, it stops the, the blow from happening. But the same rule applies when two combat cards interact with each other. And again, there's a lot to the system that I'm still trying to figure out myself. Now, where things get interesting is what happens after combat. Once you win a stage, you'll gain books based off of the characters that you fought. And then you'll burn those books in order to access their pages. Those are the rewards you see on the left-hand side. Now, each book has a fixed number of rewards you can get. So eventually, if you burn enough copies of it, you'll be able to get all those rewards. Those rewards come in the form of new combat pages and different types of pages, such as those that allow you to transform your teammates into those respective characters, which also gives you their own resistances and stats, as well as passive abilities. One of the characters, for instance, gets bonus to slash type damage. And of course, they are graded in terms of rarity. Now, the general progression of this game is that you use the lower books to invite the enemies, you kill them, get those higher quality books, which will then can be used to invite more and more stronger groups of enemies, thereby building up your pool. Now, the general kind of flow of the game is that you're going to be clearing this library or improving it floor by floor. And similar to the Bomby Corporation, each quote-unquote floor has a set of prerequisites that you must meet in order to move things forward. This could be inviting specific enemies to the library, defeating them, getting certain things ranked up, and fighting the quote-unquote boss monsters. At certain 
progression threshold, you unlock these fights, and they are the gatekeepers to raising the level of each floor of the library and unlocking more content. Now, what's interesting is that while the normal enemy encounters kind of play out like your standard RPG kind of design, the boss fights are more puzzle oriented. They are focused on specific rules and abilities, and you basically have to approach each fight like a puzzle, knowing which kind of character to bring in and what kind of moves to use. Because if you don't do that, the bosses will wreck you. And it's a very interesting take. I think that's ultimately how I describe Library of Ruina. A lot of individual systems that are that come together in a very unique way. Now, with that said, I only got to play for about like 90 minutes or so, so I didn't get to see too much of it for this first look. But there is definitely potential. However, while this may be less fiddly and weird compared to the Body Corporation, it certainly has its own unique quirks that you're going to have to deal with. And we're going to talk about that next after this quick break. And now for a quick thank you to our current Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in my books on design, they are available at most major retailers. 20th Central Games to Study is for first-time developers looking to be inspired, and the Game Design Deep Dive series covers the history and philosophy of major genres, with horror coming later in 2021. Library of Runa has a lot to go for it in terms of its general appeal and its mechanics, but like Lobotomy Corporation, it does have some issues in terms of approachability and UI UX design. I know the developers are Korean, and English is not obviously their first language, and it does, I think, come through with some of the translation and just general kind of texts or descriptions of how things work. The UI is serviceable, but it's very basic, I think, in terms of trying to get things that you want to work. Like you can't just quickly drag and drop pages or see how things compare to each other. You have to dig into the UI to find that information. And quality of life features were an annoyance of Lobotomy Corporation as well. And this is one area I really hope they decide to improve on with the game as they completed, which at this point I don't know when that is. With the overall difficulty of the game, it again is a very weird game to measure in that regard. As with Lobotomy, a lot of the challenge of this game is going to be just figuring out what the rules are and bending them to your will. And I already started to see some of that aspect as I got further in the game into the second layer of the library. When you started getting teammates and being able to set things up in terms of synergy, with regards to equipment, cards, and even the character type you choose. Even more advanced play involves using abnormality pages, which are unlocked by beating a boss, and manipulating the emotional state of the area in order to get more rewards or weaken enemies. And one of my biggest suggestions for you watching this right now who are interested in this game, when you start playing, turn off quick mode that you see in the upper left. Because it actually can go so fast that it's hard sometimes to read why certain things worked or didn't work. And I'm still not sure at this point how defense is really different from attacking in terms of how things are countered, other than maybe having a higher roll value. So with all that said, Lyraruna at this moment is a very unique game. Like I said, it combines these different systems into something that we really haven't seen done in this capacity. And I would suggest that for those of you who've been watching this for like almost 10 minutes now, if you have any interest in what you've seen so far, I would say give this one a check and see if you like it. Much like Lobotomy Corporation, this is a game that's either going to really appeal to you or you're going to figure out very quickly that this game is just not for you. And this is one that I am certainly going to be coming back to 
when either it goes on sale or when the game is official release and at 1.0 to see just how much has been put into it. So with that said, we're going to wrap up this first look here. If you are an indie developer working on a game and would like me to take a look at it for the channel, please get in touch. Check out our Discord and Patreon link down below and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where some of the art and science of games. Once again, this has been Library of Runa and I will see you all next time.